Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to take a look at the print module in Lightroom. Now I'm starting here in the library module. I've got a collection of images that I want to print. So in order to quickly get to the print module, I'm going to use the shortcut Command P or Control P on Windows in order to print. Probably the first thing that I want to do is I want to set up my page setup and my print settings because I'm going to set up a template and then we're going to save this template so that I can use it to print over and over again. So in order to do this, in the lower left, I'm going to click where it says Page Setup. Now if you're on Windows, I believe that there's only one button there, but we can access all of the same options. It's just on the Mac I have the two buttons, the Page Setup and the Print Settings separate. So we'll start with Page Setup, and here I can select the printer that I'm going to print to. So I'll go ahead and choose my Epson Stylus, the 4800. And then I can choose what size I'm going to print to. So I'm going to choose this 17 by 22 inch. And obviously, depending on the printer that you're printing to, you're going to have different options here. But once I've set this up, I'll click OK, and then I'll go into my print settings. Now you can see I've got the same printer selected here at the top, and I'm going to go down to the printer driver options. So again, depending on what printer you're using, you're going to have different options here. But if I go to the print settings, I'm going to choose for the paper setup. I need to go to the manual feed because I'm going to use a fine art paper here. I'm going to use the velvet fine art paper. And then I'll just walk through the rest of these options here for color. Obviously I want the color image. I want to turn off the color settings because I'm actually going to let Lightroom color manage the image as opposed to the printer driver. But again, that's up to you. Then for my print quality, I'll use the Super Photo and turn off the high speed. Now one of the things that you'll notice is down here in the lower right, instead of just having an OK button, we actually have a Save button. When I click Save, that's going to save these settings. Now once I'm finished laying out the page, I'm actually going to save this as a template. So let's take a look at all of the different styles that we can print. We can do a single image or a contact sheet using the first option. We can move over to a picture package where I can put more than one image on a page here and move them around. Or we can go to a custom package where I can actually overlap images and pull different images on the same sheet of paper. We're going to take a look at some templates that I've created later to give you kind of a better idea of what you might want to do with these different layout styles. But for now, let's just return back to the single image contact sheet style. Under the image settings, I could choose to zoom to fill if I wanted to. Let me go ahead and just drag this guide out a little bit to show you what that would do. When I click this on, you can see that the image has actually been zoomed to fill that area. Of course, it's going to do a little bit of cropping if the area to be filled is not the same aspect ratio as your original. I'll go ahead and turn that off for now. I could rotate to fit. Um, that becomes much more important maybe when you're doing a contact sheet where you've got multiple images, some being horizontal and some being vertical. And I can choose to repeat one photo per page if I want to print maybe six up of the same image. I can also add a stroke around the border. For now, we'll leave that off. And then we'll move down to the layout area here. So here's where I can really start changing where my single image or where multiple images would appear on the page. Now I happen to know that I want this image to print 15 by 15 inches. So the easiest thing to do is to come down to the cell size and just type in 15 by 15. And then I can use the margins in order to move this around on the page. So I know, for example, that I want a little bit larger margin at the bottom. So I'm going to move this up maybe to about four inches. And of course, I can use the slider here, or we can just type in four and then tap the tab key. And I want to move it down a little bit. You can see there's still a gap here. This first line here is my margin, but it's still sitting above that. So I want to move the top slider down. And in fact, I happen to know that I want to move that down to three inches there. And I also want a one inch border on the left and on the right hand side. So now I've got my image printing exactly where I want it on this page. Of course, we could go in and we could change the number of rows and columns if we want to put multiple images on a page and then change the cell spacing in between that. But we'll take a look at a template that does that in a moment. Now let's move down to the guide area. Obviously, I'm showing my guides and I actually clicked 
to drag them. We can rearrange this if we want to. One of the nice options here is actually the page dimensions, especially if you have multiple images that are printed on the same page. You might want to see the size of each one of those. Of course, we can choose to hide all of these if we want to as well. All right, under the page area here, I can change my background color. This might be nice, for example, if you're going to send this off to a color lab to have printed. Since I'm going to use this inkjet printer, I want to go ahead and leave that white so I'm not wasting a lot of ink. I could choose to add an identity plate if I wanted to. And this identity plate, of course, we can move around. Right now it's white, so we can't see it. So I could choose to override the color. I'll also just scale that up so we can see it. And then show you that I can really move that and reposition that anywhere on the page if needed. For now, we'll turn that off. I can also add a watermark. This is really convenient if you want to add something like the word proof over each one of your images. Again, we'll take a look at a template that does that in a minute. And if I'm printing multiple pages, I might want to show a page number, page info, as well as crop marks that are going to help me cut the image if I need to trim it down. I can also add photo info under the image. Again, I probably wouldn't want to add a lot of information underneath this photograph since I'm just printing one image up. But if I was creating a contact sheet, this could be really handy to include the file name or other information about each one of the images. Now let's scroll down to the print job here. You'll notice that I'm printing to a JPEG file right now. I actually want to switch that because I'm going to print this to the printer. So as soon as I select that, I get a few different options. Draft mode printing is going to print a lower quality image, so I'll leave that off. I'm also going to leave off the print resolution. I basically want Lightroom to figure out the optimal print resolution while printing this image to this specific printer at this size. I would really only want to enable that if I want to override Lightroom settings. And in this case, I don't. I can choose how much print sharpening I want. First, what I would do is I would select my media type. In this case, I've got a matte paper, so I'll choose that. And then I'm going to add the standard amount of sharpening. If I wanted to print this out in 16-bit and my printer supported it, I would have this option and I could enable it here. Now, under color management, this is really important because you either want to have Lightroom color manage your image or you want to have the printer color manage. In this case, I want Lightroom to color manage it, so I want to pick the printer profile here. Now, we can see I have three different profiles loaded, but if I wanted to see additional profiles on this system, I could choose other. And you can see there's a lot of different profiles. The thing is, I rarely use most of these. So what I've done is I've just checked the one that I use all the time. That way, it's those three profiles that will appear in this drop-down list. So here, I want the profile for the 4800, the Velvet Fine Art, with the matte black ink. Excellent. Once I've set this all up, because I don't want to have to go through this again, I'm going to scoot over to the left-hand side, and we're going to create a template. I'll go ahead and call this template 15 by 15 on 17 by 22 velvet fine art paper. Now I can select a different folder here. By default, it would save it in my user templates, which is fine. But as you can see, I print a lot from Lightroom. So I have all of these different folders set up, and they each contain a number of templates. But for now, let's save this with user templates. Click Create. And then as we scroll down here, we can see under my user templates, there is my new preset. This is great because this means that I can go tomorrow or next week and I can change folders of images and I can come back into the print module and simply use this template. Now, if I wanted to save this template with this set of images, then I could create a saved print. Once I select that, we'll call this my digital illustration prints. I'm going to save this inside this collection. Of course, I don't have to, but I will. I'll click Create. And now we can see that inside my collection, I have a saved print. And it's got the little printer icon right here. All right, let's return back to the collection, because one of the things I didn't notice is I didn't actually have all of these images selected. So I'm going to do a quick Select All, and then just drag these images on top of the digital image print collection. So now we can see them all. The great thing about doing this is that I can actually click the print option right now. 
and Lightroom is going to print one of each one of these images in this saved print collection. So that means I don't have to sit here and say, okay, print one and then print another and print another. Of course, because I am using that manual feed on the printer, I will need to load the paper, but still that's nothing compared to having to set all of this up for each individual image. All right, now before we start looking at other templates, I just want to scoot up to maybe show you a few different layouts here, still using the same layout style, the single image layout style, but I wanna show you how to quickly add multiple images per page. So in this case, I don't want my cell size as large. Let's go ahead and reduce that down maybe to four by four inches. And let's turn on those guides as well. One of the things that you might have noticed is every time I click on a panel header, the other panels automatically close, and that's because I use the right mouse click or the control click on the Mac in the panel header area, and I change this to solo mode. So that's just something that's really helpful when I'm working on my laptop and I don't have a lot of screen real estate. All right, so in this layout, I have my cell size, the correct size, but I need to add additional rows and additional columns. And in fact, I also want to remove all of these margins here. You'll notice that even moving the slider all the way to the left doesn't remove them completely, and that is actually based on the printer that I'm printing to and the settings in those printer settings. So your margins might be a little bit different depending on the printer that you're printing to. All right, let's go ahead and add a few more rows and a few more columns, maybe even one more. All right, so that's how you would print multiple images on a single sheet. I think at this point I could go to the guides and turn off the dimensions because they're a little bit larger, but that's the easy way to create a contact sheet. And of course, if I went down here under the page area, Remember down here under the photo info area, if I wanted to add the file name underneath each image, this is how I would do it. Or I could add additional information, for example, the exposure or the equipment, or I could go in here and edit this and create my own set of custom photo information that I want to have printed underneath each image. And of course, we can change the font size here as well, maybe make that a little bit smaller. But one of the things to notice is when you do add this additional information, it's adding it within the cell. So that's just something to keep in mind because if we go to the layouts area, you'll notice that the cell size is still the same size, but the image is going to print a little bit smaller. And in fact, if we go up here underneath the image settings, if I did have the zoom to fill turned on, I just wanna warn you that it's gonna actually crop off a little bit of the image. So we probably don't wanna do that in this case. Again, once you've got this set up, if I thought I was gonna use this over and over again, I would just scroll up to my template browser and then click the plus icon and we could go ahead and save this as a new template. All right, let's take a look at a few of the other templates here. I'm just going to scroll down to the examples area. One of the nice things about this is you actually get a preview up here when you just roll over each one of these examples. But let's go ahead and click on some of them. So here I just have a very simple layout here. Again, the layout style is going to be the single image contact sheet. And I've just put two columns here, two images right next to each other. I do happen to have a stroked border that gives me that nice white outline between them. And in fact, while we're looking at these templates, let's just turn off the guides for a moment. And then right down here, you'll notice that I actually have in the page area an identity plate turned on. All right, let's take a look at some other templates. Here's again a diptych, but we have two images with a black background. Of course, if I ever want to rearrange my images, maybe I wanna pair this image with the first image instead, what I can do is, let's just make this a little larger, I'll click on this one single image, and then I could just drag to rearrange it in the film strip. Now when I select those first two images, now they're paired together. All right, here's another diptych. This time it has a logo. Again, it's just a different identity plate. Here I have three different panoramas, but I've actually switched. Instead of using the layout style, I'm using the custom package. That's why the images didn't automatically just appear in there. Now what I can do is I can drag and drop any of these images into any of these spaces. And of course, because they're not the same aspect ratio, 
I would actually need to hold down the command key or the control key if I want to move around my image within these cells. So it's a little bit different behavior. It just happens to be the way that the custom package works. All right, the next template we'll take a look at, this is just a simple three by three. Here we've gone back to the single image layout, so I'll do a select all to have Lightroom automatically fill in all the rest of the images. And then you can see here underneath the page area, we have an identity plate, but it's printing on every single image, but it's got a decreased opacity so we can kind of see through the text there. All right, just a few more here. This happens to be a template that I've created for my blog. I wanted to show you this because down here in the print job area, you'll notice that instead of printing to a printer, I'm actually gonna print this to a JPEG file. So you can use the print module not only to create templates to print to a printer, but you can also print to a JPEG file. So this is really handy, for example, if you were going to send this image to maybe your color lab, or you might wanna actually print an image maybe that's 12 by 12 that happens to be the same dimensions as the book module and you can actually import that printed JPEG right into the book module. So if there's a template that you're maybe not seeing in the book module, you could create it your own. In fact, I believe I have one right here at the top, this custom layouts for books. If I wanted to print three by three images, look, I could print this out to a JPEG file, import that JPEG file into Lightroom and then use that as a single image in my book module. All right, just one or two more here. We've got a double page spread. This again is using the custom package layout style. And if I wanted to, I could simply drag and drop my images here in order to fill these out. Again, I could print this to a printer or I could print this to a JPEG file and send it off to a lab. And then one more that I should definitely show you, at least one example of a picture package. So here is the layout style, the picture package layout style. You can see that you can add all sorts of different cells. In fact, if I add additional cells, it will continue to create additional pages if I want to. This is really when you want to, to print a large volume of the same image so just a single image here, but you want to, to print multiple copies of it. And of course, if I were to select multiple images down here and I were to click print, then it would print all three pages for each one of the images that I have selected. The reason the print button is dim right now is just because I'm printing to a JPEG file, but of course we could change this to the printer and now we could print this here as well. Excellent, well I hope that gives you kind of a good overview of the many, many possibilities in Lightroom's print module. My name's Julianne Cost, thanks for watching.